Hello and welcome. This is going to be section two of the mechanical systems screencasts and we're going to start off with talking about probably uh, what I would consider one of the more difficult concepts to understand. The learning target today, uh, what is the advantage to using a mechanical device? And this question comes kind of twofold. One, is there a use in using a machine? And two, can it actually be calculated? So maybe a better way to put this is, what is the calculated advantage to using a mechanical device? Let's start off with a random scenario. Let's say that you're on a road trip with your family far from the nearest city or town. Uh, let's say you're in Saskatchewan. And when suddenly your car gets a flat tire, your driver, who's the expert, opens the trunk to take out the spare tire, but there's no car jack. So you got the spare tire, but there's no car jack. What can you do? You know the car is too heavy to lift by yourselves. Unless you're Superman, and you're not Superman, because that's Superman. Um, so how are you going to get this jack underneath the car? Okay, There are stories about how people have lifted cars in emergency situations, but this is not that type of emergency. Well, I'm sure most of you will figure out the quick answer is, well, I need to use a machine. I need to find some way to lift the vehicle. And you'd be right. The quick answer is to use a machine. Uh, one that you can create from materials available, uh, tree stumps, logs, large rocks, whatever. Okay, But this machine uh, makes it a heck of a lot easier for you to lift the car if you are able to find the right parts. How much work is this doing for you? How much, uh, and I use work maybe in quotation marks, how much work is it doing for you? How much force is that machine creating? What sort of advantage uh, is that to using the machine to replace that tire right there? Well, this is where we get into um, how machines create something called a mechanical advantage. Uh, in essence, machines can make it easier by increasing the amount of force that you exert on an object. Remember in the first parts of the unit we talked about how uh, machines can transfer the force or multiply the force. This is where we now apply that into an everyday situation. So we want machines to use more force than we do in order to do more um, more effort or more work or, or to move something faster or easier than us. And that's with us ha without us having to exert extra force, which is good. I don't want to exert extra force. So I don't want to push the desk harder than I have to. I'd rather use a machine if possible. So when a machine increases the force that you exert, such as in this um, caulking gun, okay, uh, we say that the machine creates a mechanical advantage. When I put in the tube of, let's say, um, a tub surround uh, uh, sealant in this little thing here, I pull back on that hook and it goes all the way back and every time I pull the trigger, there's a spring in there. And that spring will actually force that flat uh, kind of round part, this part right here. Okay, and I'll circle it there for you too. It actually causes that part to push on the bottom of the tube and will force uh, the, the sealant out. This little handle here creates a mechanical advantage because I don't have to squeeze the stuff out. The machine does it for me, and that's a good thing. Okay. Now, we're going to jump around a little bit in your notes here. So what I would like you to do is I'd like you to look for the uh, part in your notes that says, uh, so it's in a box there, it says mechanical advantage, and then there's a blank space. So it should be right underneath the picture of that gun. I'd like you to put in that box these two things. Uh, mechanical advantage is the force you apply. Input force, that's the force you apply. And output force, the force the machine applies. Okay, So you, what you apply input force, what the machine applies output force. So kind of to simply put it, just to say it one more time, a mechanical advantage is comparing how much force you put in judging by the force that the machine puts in. Uh, to use words that we've also been using, we're comparing the size of the load compared to the size of the effort force. The load is the force that you've put in, and the effort force is the force done by the machine. Okay. So here's your example, only um, cartoonized, uh, the flat tire or the stuck in the mud, trying to find a way to get it out of uh, uh, out of trouble. Okay, and here's picture the lever. Now, in this example, uh, what do you know about levers that could help you possibly explain how that lever could exert more force than you? 
So I guess what I'm asking is, knowing what you know about levers, how does the lever work so that you do less force than the lever itself? And if you think back to our first lab, our first Simple Machines lab, where we looked at the different types of uh, levers, it comes down to this. Wherever our load is, load is right here once again, the L, we want our fulcrum to be closer to the load. Okay? And in doing that, if we make our fulcrum closer to the load, that means we have to lift our load further and we have more room in the lever arm to move it up and down. Okay, this, this E right here has all this room, all this room right here, all this room right here to move if I move the fulcrum closer to the load. Okay, so the closer the fulcrum is to the load, the easier it is to lift that load. And we know that by using levers, that's how we can actually do that. So at the top part of the second page of your notes there, it says a lever will give you a high mechanical advantage. And we'll talk about what that means in a second. It'll give you a high mechanical advantage, which means that the lever will do more work than you. And I put work in quotations because it's not a perfect term, but it's a term that's understandable right now. Okay. So. Flipping to the third page or so in this section, you'll see here it says mechanical advantage formula. This is the formula that I would like you to write there. Mechanical advantage can be calculated by taking the output force, the force the machine creates, and dividing that by the input force, the force that you are putting in. Going back to that cartoon we have here, we have specific numbers, effort force, load force. Now with this effort force here, be your output or input? Would this load force be your output or input? In order to calculate mechanical advantage, those need to be clarified. So let's take a look here. Okay, Your output force should be the, that's right, the load force. Okay, The input force should be the effort force, just in that picture there. So if we crunch some numbers here, Output force divided by input force is 2,500 newtons divided by 500 newtons, which gives us, quick math, 5. The answer is just 5, no, no units. Okay? Uh, please copy this example down underneath that picture in your notes too so that you understand exactly uh, uh, what, what we're trying to calculate here. So in this example, the branch lever has exerted a force that is five times greater than the force you exerted on the branch. We therefore say that the branch has a mechanical advantage of five. Okay, because it exerted a force five times greater than you. I'm going to skip over this example here, but if you'd like to work through it, I'll leave it here. You can always pause and go through see what answer you get. And if you're not sure, come and ask me. Uh, but we will go over this example in class just to verify it. There's, there it is there for you. Uh, continue in your notes. I know there's spots that I've missed here and I apologize that I'm jumping around. But continuing in your notes. Now let's talk about speed ratio ever so quickly here. Okay, Speed ratio is what's called the measure of how the speed of an object being lifted is affected by the machine. So we have here the distance you move, which is the input distance and the distance the load moves, which is the output distance. So all of this here needs to go in that box that says speed ratio. Now, the formula for speed ratio is input distance divided by output distance. That's actually the reverse. Okay, Input distance divided by output distance. Now, speed ratio and mechanical advantage can get a little bit confusing. So I'm going to do my best to, to explain them both together here uh, just ever so quickly. So when you use a machine, you, you can never get something for nothing. Okay, Something has to be given up or traded off. Now the advantage to gaining, let's say, force, being able to use less force to, let's say, move a load, the trade-off is that you lose distance. It takes you longer to move it. A really good example of this would be a ramp. Okay, If you look at the top example there, this ramp is higher. It's going to take more force to move it up the ramp, but less time. So we say it would actually have a higher mechanical advantage and a lower 
speed ratio or a low speed advantage. In the bottom example, the books are not as high, so therefore our ramp is, not, is still the same length, but it takes us more time to get to the top of the ramp, but it takes uh, less effort. So you trade. You want to take more force to move that weight up that ramp in a faster time, or do you want to take uh, less force over a longer time? And traditionally, we pick the less force over a longer time. Okay. So this goes into uh, what we t what we talked about: mechanical advantage and speed ratio. Mechanical advantage and speed ratio are related in the sense that you can't have both. You either have something doing more work for you or something moving something faster for you. And we're going to take a look at uh, the speed ratio too with pulleys uh, later on this week in class to help you uh, explain. Now let's take a look at one more machine here, okay? It's a very simple machine. It's the screw, okay? So you find this picture in your notes there. And this question is, I believe in your notes, what sort of advantage does this machine give you? Okay. Another way to put that, what is something that you could change, possibly, about the screw to increase or decrease the mechanical advantage? Okay. Does the screw give you mechanical advantage? It does do work, yes. Right when you're twisting a screw and you're putting a a screw into a wall in order to hang a a picture or something, it does change what's called rotational energy into linear energy. But you ever notice that it takes a lot sometimes to get a screw into a wall, or to get like a screw if you have to drill a hole in the ground, it takes a lot to get it down there. Okay, uh, in some situations such as a screw we actually end up doing more work than the machine. So I'm working harder than the screw is. Well, what good is that? Why would I want to work harder than any machine? I, w I would think that the machine should do more force, or put in more force than I would. Okay, That would be the goal. But sometimes, and the screw is an example, is when you get a machine that actually gives you a low mechanical advantage. It means that you are working harder than the machine. However, there's a trade-off. And here we go talking about the trade-offs again. And I'll go back to the screw. A screw has a low mechanical advantage. So it, it does not work as hard as... No, sorry, let me back up. A screw has a low mechanical advantage. It puts in less force than you do, but can increase the speed, right? When we looked at a number of threads, or change the direction. And those are both advantages. By increasing speed, or by changing direction of the force. So you put in more force, but you get a speed change or a direction change. And that's sometimes a good thing. Here's an example. On the left, we have a picture of an auger, a very rough uh, handling machine that those uh, that very large uh, screw turns very quickly and in a sense uh, digs a hole. Now, when you're using this machine, if you do a hand auger, Okay, or a hand screw, you have to work really hard, as in you have to put a lot of force in to turn that thing into the ground, but you're changing the rotational energy, you turning the crank at the top, to a directional energy. You are going straight down. Okay, that, that's a good thing. Okay, that, that's a really good way of mechanical advantage that's low, but you get something else out of it. A really good example is a bike. Okay. Bikes also give you a low mechanical advantage. Now there's a box in your notes, a grayish box, that has this exact question in there. Can you find that one? Can you explain why this is a good thing for a bike to give you a low mechanical advantage? What would be the benefit about you working, no, about you putting in more force in, into your bike? And if you're thinking something along the lines of speed or exercise, you would be correct. A bicycle has a mechanical advantage less than one, it's small, but you gain the advantage of speed by putting in more force or more effort into the machine. I hope this is making sense. We will have some time to go over it in class. But what this whole uh, screencast is about is machines and how they can do more, uh, sometimes more force output than you put in. Okay, so if you, for example, you're using a lever, you push down with so much force and it lifts with even more force. That's one way a mechanical advantage is created. 
or sometimes you get machines that put out less force than you do, but you gain something else, like a speed advantage. Okay, and we're going to look closely at speed ratio too in, in a little bit here. So I hope that jumping around uh, didn't confuse you too much. This is probably the toughest concept to understand in this unit. So I will be sure to uh, go over this one more time. And please make sure you star or highlight or underline something, anything that is not making any sense. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I will talk to you soon.